Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed but whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, the theme of our retreat, put on the armor of light. The scripture reading today from Gospel of John chapter 3. The scripture readings today are a war cry, a call to a battle, a very urgent call indeed. The two army camps are set on high alert. The time for war. Only this war the Bible speaks about is not so much outside of us, but within us. The war that is waged at every moment in our hearts, in our lives. Every decision we take, everything we do, every relationship we are in, every moment of our life is part of that great battle. Battle between the forces of darkness and the forces of light. Hallelujah. 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 And Jesus said, this is the victory that we choose for Jesus. We choose for light, but the verdict is that we opted for darkness. And that is a condemnation. Light has come into this world, but people opted for darkness. St. Paul tells us, at every moment, we are called to make that option, that choice, the choice for the light, Jesus, the light of the world. And every moment we make a decision for light, we are winning the war. The war to make our lives victorious, victorious in the paradise of joy and peace and love, in short, heaven. Every time you and I make a choice against Jesus. Well, there's a failure. We lose the war. And the many moments we lost the war make our lives miserable. No wonder there's so much of sadness, so much of hatred, so much of anger, so much of lust in our hearts. And this battle that we are waging at every moment. The spiritual warfare 
is what determines our style of living and we are come together to put on the armor of light st paul writing to romans things of a roman soldier armor does not mean a weapon rather armor is a whole set of weapons to protect us and to fight the shield to protect the chest the sword to fight the helmet to protect the head the covers for the arms all these together are called the armor we are set on high alert for this battle that's being waged in our hearts st paul tells us of that warfare that's happening in our lives roman chapter 7 verses 15 onwards paul tells us i don't know what's happening to me i want to be good yes that's what i want to be i want to make every decision for the good i want to be gentle i want to be kind i want to be good i want to love others i want to do good to others i want to be the light the light everywhere but what's happening to me i don't understand what's happening to me i can feel the powers of darkness the powers of evil the powers of evil waging a battle waging a battle in my heart there's a battle going on in my heart saint paul says between what i want and between what i want and what i do not want the evil and the good the darkness and the light this battle is going on i don't know i don't know what i am going to do often i realize i have made a decision i have made many decisions against the light against jesus christ and therefore there are powers of evil i understand powers of evil are already dwelling in my heart wretched man that i am there are powers of evil dwelling in my heart saint paul also tells us how do the powers of evil the forces of darkness enter into our hearts he tells us ephesians 4 36 get angry but do not commit a sin every anger is a moment of choice a moment of choice getting angry could be a matter of a moment but then what do i do after that do i do i keep that anger in my heart do i keep that hurt feeling in my heart if i keep that hurt feeling if i keep that anger then what happens is that hurt feeling that anger leads me to hatred to self-pity to revenge and hot temperedness well that's when i realize the power of hatred has come into me this power of hatred comes into me because of my choice i made a choice at that moment of getting angry i made a choice i made a choice to get the power of hatred to enter into my heart the power of revenge the power of self-pity the power of depression to get into my heart that power remains in me same way any temptation is a moment i make a choice we make a choice a temptation for lust to watch an unholy pornographic site well i happen to see it but then i made a choice no i don't want to see it i don't want to continue to see it i i shut down the computer well i have won the battle i have made a choice in favor of jesus christ in favor of the light in favor of purity in favor of god but then if i continue to watch it i realize this power of lust is getting strong in me that power continues to hold me captive and then i justify it everyone sees it it's there everywhere what's the big thing about it you know what a sin that i justified 
will come back to me as a temptation. When that sin comes back to me as a temptation, I will not be able to say no to it because I already justified it. I found a reason to hold on to it, to cling on to it. When it comes back as a temptation, I'm not able to say no to it. I fall back into it again. And therefore, that evil power, the demonic power of lust enters into me and becomes part of my heart. Demonic or devilish. Why devilish? Because these are more than human. I have no control over them. I have no control over them. Ask a person who is hot-tempered. Ask a person who drinks. Ask a person who uses drugs. They will tell you that. Once I drink, I make drunkenness a habit. I cannot say no to it because I justified it. It is in me a power. I have no control over that. Rather, that evil power controls me, controls my legs, controls my willpower, controls my eyes. Evil controls me. Lust, for example. Lust controls my eyes. My eyes will always be waiting to see the evil, the obscene, the unholy, the impure. Because the power of lust is controlling my eyes. And that's what St. Paul tells us. Our body becomes the instruments of sin. The instruments, the weapons of evil. These weapons are there waging war against my own soul. Paul says, the time is up. We cannot be sleeping anymore. We cannot be drowsy anymore. We cannot be lazy anymore. Because there are powers of sin that have entered into our lives. Because of our past, because of our surroundings, because of our decisions, evil forces have already entered into our hearts, waging war against us. We are not able to say no to them. And the more we try, the more we fail. The more we fail, we get more depressed and desperate, and we give up the battle. This is where this retreat becomes timely for us. We understand the powers of evil, the forces of darkness that are holding us captive, how many these are and how powerful these are. But we shall not be afraid because the Lord is with us. Jesus is on our side. He's waiting to wage the war for us. This battle belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall all of us raise our hands and say hallelujah. 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 And that's why the Lord has brought us here into his presence to tell us he's on our side. He's waiting to defeat the enemy. All we need to do is to surrender. Surrender our lives totally in the hands of God. That God may be able to take up this war. This battle really belongs to the Lord. And the Lord will wage it for us. But then we need to put on the armor of light. Always to be alert, always to be waiting to see any movement of the evil power within us. Let's not blame others. Let's not blame witchcraft. Let's not blame um, superstitious practices. Let's blame ourselves. It is me. It is I who allowed the powers of evil to enter into me. The power of envy, the power of hatred, the power of lust, the power of drinking habit, the power of smoking habit, the evil force of drug addiction, the pornography habit, the gambling habit, and whatever other evil forces are there in me, it's I. You and I, it's our decision that brought in these evil powers into our hearts. I say this, the Bible tells us this in order to make us realize we are not to blame anyone. It's my choice. It's our choice. But then God does not blame us. God is taking us side. This moment, this moment of our retreat is a decisive moment in our life. Decisive because God has made a choice. God has made a decision. A decision about every one of us. That's what Jesus said. John 6, 44. 
No one can come to me unless my father draws him. Unless my father draws her, no one can come to me. We have come to Jesus. We have come to the presence of God and that means God has made a decision. God has realized how we are failing. We are losing in our battle. This battle is costly. If you and I lose this battle, we lose our life. Because Jesus said, John 10:10, 10, 10, the evil powers come in to destroy, to plunder, and to kill. It's exactly what's happening to us. Look at the sort of anger in our hearts, the sort of hatred in our hearts, the sort of disturbance and distress in our families, the sort of unholy powers that are holding us captive. The evil powers, the evil forces that we find it difficult to defeat in the battle. The battle is growing strong and we are wounded. Wounded that we are, we are being brought into the presence of our God. Jesus has made a decision. Our Heavenly Father has made a decision to give us the Holy Spirit that we may be able to win this battle. This battle that's being waged in our hearts. The battle in favor of Jesus Christ and Jesus is on our side hallelujah 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 my dear sisters and brothers I remember a young man came here for a retreat a graduate he completed his graduation for two years now but then he did not get a job his family depends on him his father is retired his mother is sick and he knows his family depends on him and he could not continue his education but then he did not get a job he became desperate he had nothing to do in the house and that's when evil friends entered into his life his friends took him away from God into all sorts of unholy practices but every time he felt he felt a power calling him back Calling him back to Jesus, he knew this was the Holy Spirit in his heart. Holy Spirit in his heart inspired him to come away from the evil forces. But then he went into sin again and again, into pornography, into using others for his own unholy pleasure, for the kick of his flesh. Every time he went into sin, he became more guilty, he became more sad, he became more depressed. And he was totally lost. He knew, that he knew this. It was in this situation that he came here for a retreat. He said to me, Father, I have hardly anything to do at home. No job. At the same time, when I look at my parents, I feel terrible. I'm not doing anything for them. I'm not even able to go in search of a job. I have no motivation to look for a job. Friends offered me a, a jobs a number of times, but even when the friends offered him, he could not take up that job because he lost all the self-confidence. That's exactly what sin does to us. The one thing the evil powers do to us is to remove from our hearts all, all self-worth value about myself I don't value myself anymore a sinful person the first the first casualty of sin is this the devil takes away all self-esteem what good am I for I'm not good for anyone anymore I'm not good for God I'm not good for my parents I'm not good at all I'm drawn into sin again and again I'm ashamed of myself it started with Adam when Adam committed a sin a sin of rebellion against God. God had commanded him not to eat of that fruit. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they rebelled against God. After having committed sin, Adam and Eve felt so ashamed of themselves. They were hiding, hiding behind the tree. God came calling Adam. Adam was hiding. God called again, Adam. Adam said, God, I'm hiding. I'm ashamed. I'm naked. There's a question God asked Adam. Adam, who told you you are naked? What's the big thing about nakedness? Even before sin, Adam and Eve were naked, weren't they? 
nakedness in the bible means shame a shame of emptiness a shame of guilt a sense of unworthiness i'm not good at all i lost my standing with you that's what adam said oh god i'm naked i cannot look into your eyes I lost my standing with you. I lost all my self-esteem. I'm good for nothing. I can't even come near your presence. And that's when God asked a question to Adam. Adam, who told you you are naked? I did not say, did I? Did I say you need to be ashamed of yourself? Did I say you lost your standing with me? Did I say you need to be ashamed of what you did? I'm come calling you in the Bible. To call someone by name is to come to him with respect. With respect. Everyone who respects the other would come calling him by name. God came calling Adam by name. With respect to Adam. But Adam was hiding because he lost his self-confidence, his self-esteem. My dear sisters and brothers, it's exactly what could have happened to us. We lost our self-esteem. And therefore, when I lose my self-esteem, I become rebellious. There could be my young friends here, rebelling against the parents, rebelling against the church, rebelling against God, rebelling against others. I don't care. Haven't you heard people say, I don't care. Behind it, there's a shame. Shame, I lost my self-esteem. I'm not good for nothing. I am in sin. The one thing and the first thing sin does is to take away our self-esteem in such a sad, in such a powerful manner. I, I realize I'm good for nothing. My dear sisters and brothers, sin is so terrible. Sin is so costly. The powers of darkness destroy us. It's exactly what could have happened to, to us. What's needed is to put on the armor of light to come to God, to come to God asking pardon for our sin. God wanted Adam to come to him, telling him, oh God, I'm sorry. I took the side of Satan. I'm sorry for this. I rejected you. I accepted Satan. I believed in Satan more than in you. I thought Satan would make me happy. The offer of Satan would make me great. I went away from you. I took the side of Satan. I'm sorry, Lord. No, no, Adam did not say that. Rather, Adam turned to Eve and said, blaming Eve and said, that woman you gave me, that woman caused my downfall. Exactly what sin does to us. Sin makes us blame others. My dear sisters and brothers, if you blame me your father, if you blame your mother, it's not because there's a problem with your father, not because there's a problem with your mother, but because there's a problem with you. When I have a problem in my heart, if I know I'm good for nothing, I lost my self-esteem, I will blame others. Everyone who lost their self-esteem will blame. If a wife blames the husband, it's not because the husband is wrong, but because there is sin in the wife. If the husband blames the wife, it's not because the wife is wrong, but there is, there is a self-contempt in the husband. Every, every man, every husband who drinks, every drunkard will suspect the wife. Not because there's something wrong with the wife, but because this man has lost his self-esteem. Self-esteem will blame others. It's exactly what's happening in our families. What's happening in our families? Everyone blaming everybody else. What's happening in our institutions? What's happening in our parishes? A lot of blaming each other, finding fault with the other. It's all finding fault is the armor of the evil power. Because that's the first thing the evil one does. The first thing the evil one does is to take away our self-esteem. The second thing is to blame others. To blame others. And that brings us to destruction wherever we are. Wherever we are, my dear sisters and brothers, God has taken charge of our lives. In this moment, God has chosen us. 
and brought us into his presence god has taken charge of our lives let me come back to that young man he told me father i i lost everything today i don't care for my dad i don't care for my mom i shouted them i scream even when they come to me with an offer of love i don't care for them because i know there is sin in me this young man i told him surrender your life in the hands of god surrender a total consecration of your life in the hands of god and god will take charge of your life and he did it he did it he totally offered his life his body his mind his soul everything in the hands of god and god took charge of his life i met him an year after one year after he came here he was a totally new person is able is able to pray is able to go to church every day is able to read the word of god this man was totally new because he put on the armor of light hallelujah shall all of us raise the hands and say hallelujah 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 this retreat my dear sisters and brothers this retreat should enable us to make a very honest soul searching where have i failed where have i failed my god where have i failed my family where have i failed everyone around me where have i failed in my mission in my mission to proclaim the good news of salvation to be an agent of the kingdom of god wherever we have failed we need to come back come back to god and surrender everything wrong in our lives and god has taken charge of our lives that's the good news that the lord wants me to tell you whatever is gone wrong let's not despair let's not give in to to any sort of sorrow because this is a moment as st paul tells us as st paul tells us it's a moment the time is become so close the salvation is much closer than you had anticipated st paul tells us the urgency of the battle we wage the battle we gear up for the battle in which the lord is on our side and the lord will fight with us therefore the one question we must be asking during our retreat which are the weapons which are the weapons i must put on and be on the alert to wage the war so that uh, my life may be meaningful on this earth perhaps we wasted our lives we wasted many opportunities but then here comes the time god has chosen us god has chosen us to be close to him to be one with him to open our hearts to him hallelujah hallelujah